Right, to start off again, um, what I'm going to be doing now is building the mount for the weapons. And it's basically like a big ball, and it fits into a socket in the side of our obelisk. Um, now, there's three of these weapons, and in the configuration for a monolith, which I noticed, these ones are all kind of side by side, which is, yeah, funky I suppose. But uh, this isn't a monolith. And I think the side-by-side -side configuration looks a bit gay. So I'm going to do them instead. Let's get this right. In a kind of triangle formation, a pyramid. Yeah, which kind of, for me, goes well with the whole obelisk shape. There we are. And I think it looks quite nice. And it also reminds me of that film with the Undertaker in, whose name I completely can't remember. Do you remember the one that has this like creepy Undertaker in and they made about 900 different versions of it? You know, the sequels and stuff. And it had a pointy ball that used to throw around, it was utterly retarded. But a lot of people loved it, cult classic. Anyway, I'm going to make out a sphere from here, because I'm just going to talk for hours otherwise. And let's increase the size of that sphere just a little bit. Um, we have to think carefully, is it going to fit in there? So what I'm going to do is just grab this one. Stuff it in there so I can have a look. Looks like it is, so that's always a good thing. So I can bring that down to there and bring that into about there. Top viewport zoom. And I'm going to just line this up on there. And now I can rotate this by 90 degrees. Sorry, 45 degrees, I mean. And I'm going to take the pivot. I'm going to rotate that back by 45 degrees. Why, you may ask, because it's going to make things a bit easier for us later on. Okay, now, what I need to do over here is take this piece and basically attach these to it. So what I'm going to do is convert to an edible poly, and I'm going to attach my webs to it. I'll just drag through there, and then click Grow, like so, and then I'll delete that part. I'm going to grab here and cap, and then just use my move tools just to get this into what I would consider to be the right position. So just until they start to intersect pretty much, which is about there. Okay, now what I want to do, if I press F3, is kind of line this up between the three of them. Like so. Put it back in perspective again and have a look. Make sure they're all fitting in properly. Now I'll bring that up. I'm kind of using my eye here to try and get this as right as I can think. Now I'm going to do some insetting. First inset to about there. And this shows me now that this can be adjusted a little bit more. Oop. There we are. And I'm going to insert this again to about there. Okay, and now what I can do is I'm going to do a bevel, just a nice inward bevel. At a height of minus 0.02. Outline amount of minus 0.02 again. And click OK. Now I'm going to do an insert by about minus 0. Point, well, not minus 0.05. Move this up here so I can see what I'm doing better. Now I bevel again and make the height 0 0.02. It's good keeping everything kind of the same every time. You can see now we've got that nice maker's mark there. Okay, now what I'm going to do is do this part here. So, if I select this line here and do a ring, then control and select by polygon, that selects all this part for me, which is ideal. So I can then do that inset, an inward bevel, like so. Okay, another inset, and then an outward bevel. OK, 
go and again hit a four and you can see that comes together quite nicely like so now we can patch it a bit so I'm going to grab some areas on this I'm trying to make the selection process kind of random insert bevel it again It just kind of adds a lot more shape to this and makes it look a lot more, not esoteric perhaps, but uh, I don't know, certainly a lot more, it gives it a lot more presence I'd say. A lot better than just having this kind of smooth ball shape. There we go, now insert. And this time I'm doing it your note without having hit F4. Just so you can see what a difference it's making to the actual model shape. Okay, now for these top parts here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select carefully. So I want to go here, and then I'm going to select round about here, not that one, that one, and that one. And if I just loop those, I can then start to kind of divide this shape down a bit. I'll just click ignore back facing for this part. And this is allowing me to divide this into large panelled areas. And what I'm going to try and do actually is not do that kind of zig sh zigzag shape there because uh, technically there's no real reason for me to. It's a lot better trying to make shapes that are going to work as simple as possible. Okay, now if I do a quick chamfer on these, you'll notice that's a little bit too big. So I'm going to start with 0 0.02 and we'll go up from there. There, 0 0.05 should do it. Now, if I select all these, I can do them all simultaneously. Now, some people are going to be selected, uh, selected, is tempted to mark e drag. Some people are going to be selected, uh, Jesus Christ, sorry about that, shouldn't profane, shouldn't blaspheme, but nonetheless, are going to be tempted to use the whole kind of drag select thing. Don't, okay? Sure, it's going to take you a couple of extra minutes, however, oh, look at that. These have been moved and they shouldn't be. Move them back carefully. However, just take your time. Okay, it's better to select things carefully and you know not make mistakes wherever you can, rather than rushing and discovering just as you get past the threshold for the undo button that you made a cock up. And trust me, I know this as well as anyone does, you know. The part I recorded before this, which is deleted was um, I did this and then I built the mount and to save a little bit of time for all of us I only built the bottom half of the mount and mirrored it up. Now you tell me and I'll give you about two minutes to consider it if that why that wouldn't work and then I'll explain to you why that wouldn't work and why it was a complete oh god I'm going to have to delete it and do it all over again kind of moment. Meantime, let's do a bevel down. Such a lovely shape. Okay, and an inset. And now an extrude down. Now then that's a bit too much, but a local normal is what we need. Okay, now an inset. slightly less than 0.2. In fact, I think probably that was a bit too far down. Hang on. Let's extrude it down by minus 1.5. There, that's better. Now an insert. Now an extrude it again. Make it 
positive amount this time. Okay, and an inset, uh, bevel it down again. Inset, and bevel it up by minus 0 0.04, so it gets back up to the original height again. Haha, <laughs> you thought I hadn't noticed. There we go. And that gives us a much nicer deep panel kind of effect, which I quite like. Okay, not worked it out yet, but it's quite simple, right? What I did was, I took the rear panels on this, on the bottom and on the top, and I sank this part into it. But to save time, without thinking, I kind of marquee dragged the bottom half, deleted the top half, built the section I was planning on, mirrored the top, note that, and then started putting back in, and then of course noticed, because I'd forgotten, the shape. You can't mirror this bottom piece and expect it to fit up at the top bit, of course. It's much smaller and all the angles are different. So I'd really wasted my time with that, unfortunately. Okay, now, back to this. And what I'm going to do is I'm also going to apply my basic material to this once I've attached the guns. I can attach the guns simply because they're not animated. Maybe the effects of, you know, green lightning arcing through them or whatever it is, but uh, they're not. So I'm just using an ambient occlusion texture on this, simply because I can render it and look for any errors, which really does help an awful lot. Okay, let's go back into this again. And what I'm going to do now is kind of select this piece, and I'm going to do a ring. Control select by polygon. I'm just going to take out a couple of little bits here and there. Deselect them, you know. And then I'm going to do an inset. Bevel. Oops. Minus 0 0.02. Quick inset. And then a bevel out. Okay, and that adds a couple of levels to that that are quite nice. Now on here, because we're kind of mixing curved shapes in as well, we could just apply not a rivet, oh dear god no, but we could put a cylinder on here. A very small one, like that, just to break up the shape. You'll notice I haven't done any chamfering really on mass. There's a reason for that, I'm just going to use the edge checks tool which is free and fantastic and I love it dearly. Okay. I'm not even going to put one in the third slot. See? That's how hardcore I am. Alright. Now, I'm going to rotate this 45 degrees. Okay, and just move our gun over to here. Now, over here then, what I'm going to do is select this, 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 and that. And I'm going to detach them. Uh, let me see, I'm going to detach them as a clone, and then I'm going to hide this piece, so hide selection. Okay, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach that, and from this angle here, I'm going to delete all the front-facing polygons on the sphere. There we are. And then I'm going to select this as an element and flip it. Good. Next. I'm going to grab this part and scale it in the local shift and drag it out just like so. Now, if we look at our local and just check how this is coming out, it's a little bit off. And by a little bit off I mean very off. But that's okay because it's centered here so we can just use our rotate tool, press A to turn off angle snap, just to straighten that just a little bit. There we are. You'll notice the scale's a bit off as well so we can scale it Go to view to scale it. Scale it a little bit there. And that gives us this lip. 
just here, which we want, incidentally. Okay, next, we want um, seven uh, connects on each side. So make sure our slide is set to zero, and then we can do seven connect edges. Do them again here. And again here. And here. So. And we also need to do a cut down the middle of each of these. I know it's a little bit messy, however, it is kind of important to make this part fit. Otherwise, it's not going to fit into our model at all. Right. Now what I'm going to do is make some fake edges that I don't need to do much with. So I'm going to grab here and here, hold the shift and just drag that back. Oops, didn't have control on there. There we go. Shift, drag. Reason for this, don't worry, I haven't just gone mental. Okay, now I can wipe out these internal polygons. Like so. Alright, now let's start connecting things together. So I'll use the bridge tool, which is the 3D equivalent of popping paper. There, there. And there, to there. Okay, so we can see now how this is going to kind of come into this piece. Now we have to move all these pieces in order to make them fit onto here. So, what I'm going to do now is just use the target weld tool. And just go up like this. side. Oops, on one. Or is it? No, I made a gap there. Hold on, let's just go back. I'll do it from the middle instead. See, this is the point you kind of get to in 3D and you start making the mistakes and you go, oh god, no. What did I do? Uh, I start crying bitterly. So just be careful, honestly. Okay, now we can get rid of this one because we've got one too many lines here because I connected the sides. Let's get rid of these. Okay. Now, if we get rid of it, that one, so I can cap this. Ugh. Let's do it properly. Create. And then I can get rid of this edge here. It doesn't really want me to get rid of this edge here, does it? There, do it that way. Now do a create. Lovely chaotic piece. It looks a bit like, um, I don't know, one of those really expensive custom made speaker bells, doesn't it? However, the gun's going to fit in it really nicely. There we go. I'm going to bring this out a little bit more actually. I can do using this. Just about there. Okay. 
sad. Again, don't be tempted to mirror said object. It will make you sad. I'm not too happy actually with the way that's connected along the bottom. So let's just wipe those down again. There are better ways of making this fit. And I think I'm going to use those instead. Looking at the shape again. down and then use the scale tool just to scale it flat. There was too much of a curve forwards otherwise which looks nice but isn't really appropriate for what I want. Okay that's fine and that's fine and that means I can now grab here and here do a bridge and it means I'm not going to have to sit and kind of tidy this shape up for the next five hours as well which is good. Okay. Now on this top part here, again, I'm going to kill off these polygons for the moment. I can always get new ones. Oops. Got to be careful when we do this. And flatten it. Several times. Please bear with me, my microphone is very uncomfortable today. I'll just adjust that. The padding fell off on the headset, so it's just pure headset meets skull in all its plasticky, painful glory. And let's make that intersect there. Intersection point. Very lovely. Right. And we can see where this piece needs to come back in as well. Now we're probably going to get some overhang in there, so we can deal with that in just a minute. First though, well, we can't bridge two at once, can we? Keep forgetting. Bridge. And bridge. There we go. Right, unhide all. And that brings our initial block back. Now pick the parts we want to hide, so control I and hide selection. Now then we can see how this is going to fit in, which is good. We're going to need to mount it further back in now really though I think. Because it's not quite far back enough, so what I'm going to do is effect pivot only center to object, it's going to make it a bit easier for us. And then in the top view, what's really useful for us is, you see, this line here, we can use as a kind of liney up -y thing. Okay, let's have a look now and see how that fits. That's much better. See, that's actually fitting in a lot better than it was. Okay, now, if I select this part here, get rid of the inside polygons. We can start putting this part actually into the correct area. Let's just get rid of these side pieces that we only built when I needed them at the time. There we are. Okay, so this shouldn't be too hard now. Did I just delete the wrong piece? Let's have a look. This shouldn't be too hard now to put in the right place that and that. There we go. Alright, so in the next part we're going to connect this part in. But until then, thanks for watching. See you in the next bit.